Hello, everybody. Today's Shop Local is sitting down with the John Ehrenstein of Mill River Music. Um, and I'm actually quite excited to interview John today. I, I love his shop. So, John, please introduce yourself. Hey, Tim. Thanks for having me. Um, really been great to see what you're doing to support the local community. Uh, I've been watching some of your segments. Actually, I heard my neighbor getting interviewed yesterday. So, thank you very much. Um, I'm here... Yeah, I'm here in uh, Mill River Music in Northampton. This is our little lesson and photo photography room. Um, but uh, I guess, did you say, tell us about your business? I kind of- uh, yeah, 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 sorry, uh, yeah. No, tell, tell us what you do. This is round two for right. us. We had a little- um, we had a little uh, I didn't want to go too far without the <laughs> so, yeah. question. So yeah, we are, we're a full service music store with a specialty in guitars. Uh, we started really focused on guitar repair and selling used guitars. And uh, over the years, we've built the business into a pretty full service shop. We have some new products and new brands. We do a lot of accessories. We do some woodwinds, brass, folk instruments, a lot of different stuff. But primarily the focus is guitars. Um, we, you know, we try to keep a huge line of products for people. We want the local community to feel like they can shop at a local store, but get a lot of the um, products that they would get at the big box store. So. Um, you know, we, we do a lot of work with our local community. We buy instruments from people. We sell instruments to people. We can sign for people. We repair. So, you know, as you know, when you're a customer here, we try to, you know, provide a really full service back and so people feel like they can get everything they want. Love it. Love it. Yeah. And, um, I'm a, I'm a big fan, uh, customer of, of these guys. Like if you need anything, it, it, you guys are just so easy to work awesome. with. Fast turnaround, so, like I, I, sometimes I'm surprised in a good way by the bill. Like, like when I get a bill, I'm like, man, I, yeah. I was like, you know, you know, like that was not as expensive as I thought, and you know, not and not that you, you that you that you do it, um, you know, you, you guys definitely, um, you know, you should get paid well for what you do, and yeah. you, know, you guys just operate it so efficiently. Yeah. You know, one thing about our repair shop that, and, and our service in general is that we have a really robust sales network going on. You know, we sell instruments all over the world. We have a huge online presence. And uh, so that actually allows us to not have to monetize all of the time we spend with our customers. You know, if I were just a repair shop, it would be very different. It's like every minute would have to be accounted for or else we couldn't stay in business. So I'm not actually saying we don't charge enough for our repairs. We charge, you know, what's fair, but we, we can give a lot of service in general because we have, we have a kind of a financial engine of sales driving that. And, and we're, we're, we're able to relax into the service part of it more. You know? I, a, gr a great way to put it is value. You guys deliver value like nobody's business in, um, you know, I've, I've lived all over the States, rock guitars in different places all around the States. And you guys are like the best to deal with. Like yeah. you always give, you always go beyond. You always go yeah. beyond. That's that's the reality. I guess that's the best no, way to put it. You go, that's, you go beyond the bill, which I love. That's you know, a really interesting point, which I think is very relevant right now because all of that comes from the fact that we really care about what we do, you know? Sure. And um, I know a lot of people like to say that, but like we're all the type of people who lose sleep every night over yeah what's going on, you know? So we, we work so hard to make sure that things go well for our customers and that's what you're seeing. And it's glad that it, you know, it's, I'm glad that people can see it. Um, we, we're really like literally every bill, I review every repair bill that goes out. I'm the owner of the store because to me, it's so important to make sure that everybody's getting the right kind of value. We compare our prices at other places. You know, we, we really, we want our customers to know that when they come here, we've done the hard work for them and they can trust us to, to provide them, you know, sure. what we learned and what we are able to pull off for them. So I, I'm glad you noticed. Point. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's easy, easy. It's easy to notice. Um, so where are you guys located? We are uh, 16 Armory Street in Northampton, which is kind of behind Thorns Marketplace across the parking lot. It used to be a skateboard shop for years, a few different iterations of that. And uh, we're in here, we've been here for about, it's getting on th almost three years now, like awesome. close to three years. Yeah, August 2017, we moved in. And the business, uh, you know, has just been growing in insane ways. The health of the business is really 
pleasing. Um, you know, I tell people if I had gone into a bank with this business plan yeah. and showed them my real numbers that we've actually done, I would have been laughed out of every single yeah. bank yeah. meeting I ever went to. I right? It. This is like we're the third store in, in a small town in an industry that people think is dying. And, yeah. you know, you wouldn't believe the sales that we're having down here. And again, we, we actually feel like what we've done here is really unique and we're going to try to open up some new stores over time because it. we've built a model that we think is really the next iteration of music stores. You know, okay. we try yeah. to beat the big guys with product offerings, technology, infrastructure. You know, we're going to be building more technological infrastructure that allows us to compete with the big stores. But all of that is geared towards a better customer service experience. So our local customers can come in and get this like total small shop mom and pop treatment. But we also are out there online competing with Sweetwater and Guitar Center. And I love that. Yeah. You know, I like Sweetwater. They're a nice company. But honestly, all the rest of them, Musician's Friend, Guitar Center. Uh, they're the worst. <laughs> Garbage. I'm going to go ahead and bash them. It's, it's just, a, it's a bad, you want to pull your yeah. hair out dealing with, dealing with them. Yeah. It's, and, and, you know, I've always described it as, uh, it's almost like a, I don't know if this word is a good word to use anymore. It's almost like a kamikaze mission. These, <laughs> yeah. these stores are ruining the industry yeah. while tanking their own businesses. Like they're destroying the industry, yeah. but they're going bankrupt doing it. Yeah. And they, that, that's they just use accounting tricks and, you know, big, big global business practices to yeah. keep, you know, they are a subsidiary of some other company. Yeah. It's all, it's all accounting tricks, you know, and it's frustrating because there's like real people like us trying to do real things for other real people. Totally. And I would like to see all that stuff vanish, honestly. You know? Yeah, it was, it might, <laughs> we don't know. Uh, so yeah. Let, let's talk about, um, you know, you, you touched about, uh, you know, supporting the local community, you know, writing checks to the community and stuff. And this is okay. We can talk money. This isn't taboo. Yeah. Um, you, you threw a number at me. I was like, wow. Yeah. I, I was pretty surprised. Tell us about the checks well, that you had been writing yeah. to the local. In, uh, we finished the books for last year, a while ago. Actually, I did it in January because that's, you know, we're pretty on top of our game around here. But um, so that was our second full year in business. And we wrote over $200,000 in checks to local musicians for their gear. So that was just straight out check writing for either purchases or consignments. We did about another 100000 in trades. So that's, that's money that people are, you know, getting set yeah. against their um, trades. So that's kind of like buying the instruments as well. So if you count the trades, we did over $300,000 of purchasing from our local community last year in our second full year. And that to me is like, that's the exciting thing right there. People talk about a local quotient, you know, like how, yeah. how local is your business? Yeah. I don't think it yeah. gets any more local than us because we bring in all this money from, you know, sure. New York, Connecticut, Vermont, everywhere around us, as well as we ship all around the world and around the country. Um, so that money comes in and the big majority of it gets spent right here in the community. We do do new products. But we try to be careful about the new products we work with. Like we work with Paul Reed Smith. They're down in Maryland. They're a great company, you know. Uh, we try, you know, some of the companies we work with are less exciting. They're more, you know, big global companies. Um, we work with Eastman, which is great. They're a Chinese brand. But what I find interesting about them is they're not, it's not an American company that farmed out their labor to a Chinese company. It's a Chinese company making great guitars. They have a USA headquarters and they're just the most exciting thing out there in acoustic guitars. So we're very careful about where we spend our money. Sure. And sure. as I said, we try to spend most of it locally. So I love it. I love it. Yeah. I actually, I got to try, um, man, you got an Eastman there. It was one of the acoustics. You, you got a few, uh, different kinds. Beautiful. Beautiful. I think there's one right behind me actually. Let's see. I was just, this is our little, uh, photo booth room here and someone was asking this is a little yeah. parlor guitar right here yeah I, I, think, I think that was what i was playing it, it um you know that that style it just yeah. um plays really nice sounds really nice and just super reasonable to be priced like if their their stuff is um you know it's an interesting thing their stuff is real i think they're the best value in acoustic guitars sure they're trying to make gibson copies martin copies taylor copy i shouldn't say copies you know they're all of these things are inspired, but they, they make something within all of the flavors of the large brands. Yeah. 
And the quality for the price is ridiculous. You know, you, for, for $1,500, you get a guitar that from a lot of American companies, you'd have to spend three, four, five thousand 5000 for. And I don't begrudge the American companies. It's just the global marketplace. But I, I'd rather see my customers get a good deal on a really well-made instrument from what we've picked out as the absolute best company in China building with, you know, it was a Chinese family that started the company. They used to do woodwinds and brass. They do a lot of, um, what do you call it, uh, orchestral instruments sure. and such. So we, we love the company. So, uh, you know, and again, it's a value thing. There's, there's just, not everyone can afford a $4,000 guitar. And yeah. frankly, if you're gonna buy a four or $5,000 guitar, I'd tell you to go to a local luthier like Trevor Healy or someone like that and have one made for you. Because if you want a really nice guitar, you're gonna get more value that way. You know, Martin, I love Martin, they're great guitars, but you know, again, it, it doesn't mean when you spend three, four grand that you're always getting the greatest value in the world, you know? So yeah. it really depends what you're looking for. We want we, we sell, uh, you know, a lot of the American brands and we want people to have that, but we also want them to have other more affordable options too. I love it, man, I love it. And now let's talk about, I mean, the elephant in the room is COVID-19. How, yeah. how has that affected your business, John? Um, well, it's very interesting. You know, uh, in terms of our, in, so just, just the nuts and bolts of it are that we had to shut the storefront down on, I think it was March 23rd, is that, does that ring a bell? That was kind of the official yeah, governor sure. shutdown. I, yeah, I don't know. If it's, that. It was like 10 years ago, I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, I had to shave my beard so I didn't look so old. But it was, um, it was, um, Mar yeah, we, for about a week or so before that, we had been limiting traffic to like one person at a time anyhow. Um, but then we shut the storefront down. I did have some employees working here a little bit, and then we had to let that go. So basically, me and my wife are in here every day uh, shipping. So we've, our in-store sales have gone down by, I mean, a significant number. You know, we, we've lost probably uh, you know, 75% of our in-store sales. Um, the rest of the in-store sales are just, we're doing delivery, like local delivery or pickup kind of stuff. The nice part about that is it's usually people are buying something a little more significant, like a nice guitar, you know? Um, and then what's actually happened though, is our online business has really taken off and going back to what we were talking about before, what can we provide that other people can't? Right. I have as large of, I, I, I hate saying I, we, this business is we, we have as large of a string collection here as almost anyone, you know, guitar strings. Um, but usually people just go to musician's friend or Amazon or Sweetwater to buy that stuff. But, uh, since a lot of those places are closed, we're selling like a dozen packs of strings a day in addition to like maybe doubling our normal online sales. So, um, we we're definitely at a, overall we're at a significant loss in revenue for the month sure. but our online sales you know are probably up by 40 percent or so whereas our in-store sales are down by you know 70 percent or so I'd, I'd have to look at the numbers so um what it's resulted in is i think you know realizing that we are pretty well equipped to handle this you know, you know a lot of people their businesses are either kind of dated and they're not yet in the online marketplace. And those people are probably really suffering. And then you have some of these big companies. And the reason that I can come in here is because I own the store. And as the owner of the store, I don't mean to, to say this with any, you know, braggadocio. I'm the owner because I can do everything in the store as well or better than anybody else. And not everyone is like that about their store, you know. And so that is one of the things I think that sets our store apart. I was a luthier. So I started this from the, you know, that perspective. So I come in here every day and I'm shipping. I came in Monday to 40 orders to ship Monday morning. And then we're getting about, you know, 15 to 20 a day at least. So I'm in here. Uh, I, I describe myself a little bit as a raccoon in a dumpster uh, when I'm in the shipping room. So my wife has been helping me clean up in there after myself. Yeah. Um, uh, cause I'm just, I'm just like a rabid animal in there, but nobody ships faster and quicker and cleaner than me, but the floor suffers as a result. So, um, what I found interesting, again, here's the rubber hitting the road. We have the products, we have the infrastructure, 
we have everything online. And then you combine that with someone who actually gives a shit, and, sorry, who actually cares and can come in and, you know, I'm shipping strings every day. We're making 50 cents a pack on the strings. I would be much better off doing anything besides shipping you those strings, but we're going to ship every pack of strings that we get ordered because that's what we're going to do. Yeah. So I think what this has done for um, me, I, did I freeze? No, you're good. You're good. It said high CP usage. Let me close my windows and just see yeah. if uh, we need anything. Cool. Okay. Uh, so what, what I was saying was, you know, here's where we've kind of proving that we not only have the products and the infrastructure, but then we have the personnel to understand something like this. And, and what, I, what I've kind of gotten from this is, A, there are better ways that we're going to need to reach our local community using web technology right? Everyone's going to have to start doing that. So we're going to have to start doing more like, hey, you want to sell us an instrument, which is really at the heart of our business. And that's been something we haven't been able to do all month. And that, that hurts. Um, we're going to have to set up more web based and drive through kind of technology to deal with that. Um, but again, there's, a, there's got to be right now, a huge pile of instruments needing to be bought because nobody's been able to buy and sell instruments very much. So when we're able to resume, I feel like we're in a really good position to do that. So some of this has, you know, it's, it's decreased our sales in some ways, it's increased our sales in others, but it's made us aware that what we need to do next, which is A, use technology to better serve our local community, but then also to increase our online presence to where we really can compete with all those big guys, which I think ultimately we can do. Um, and, you know, that's, uh, that's something that this crisis kind of made me aware of, is that people are gonna need something different than just giant chain stores to, you know, even when they can't go out. Yeah, and what a value that will bring yeah. to the community, really. Yeah. Yeah, the ne actually this week, we're gonna work a little bit on a social media campaign. I'm gonna put up a form on the website, which has need to sell an instrument. You know, you can open up a little phone app and you can take photos and you can send us the info. And then we're gonna, you know, kind of get that word out there. And then even if we can't yet get the instruments in our hands, at least we can have a bunch of stuff going on in the pipeline where we can be starting to purchase instruments again from people. So. We're just going to have to, you know, reconfigure a little bit the way we do things in the store to involve a little bit more safety and whatnot, including one other thing. We're going to put a hand washing sink right at the front of the store oh, going man. forward. Just because, I mean, it's kind of gross anyway. Even before this, people would see so you get some people play the instrument and then I'd look at it and there'd be like dirt all over it. And you're like, oh, you didn't think to wash your hands before playing that thousand dollars. And you know, we want everyone to be able to play the instruments. You know, we don't, it's not, we don't want them to be too precious. Yeah. But, you know, when, so that's something that we realized is that would be a great service to everyone who comes in here is knowing that every time they play an instrument, the person who played it before them hopefully washed their hands recently. Yeah, that's brilliant, John. I, I love that. I love that. Um, and let's talk about, um, have you heard of, of, of a date that you might be able to open yet? I mean, so you know, uh, we were talking about May 4th and now it sounds like things are looking more like May 18th. Um, I'm going to start to look at ways in which we may be able to bring employees back a little more. I mean, the, the thing about this building is that I've got almost 3000 square feet here. Excuse me. Not everyone realizes we have a couple rooms in the back for storage and repair. So we have enough space in here where I can set employees up with their own space where they literally wouldn't have to interact with another person all day, yeah. including our shipping areas, self-contained, our repair areas are self-contained. So we're going to start to look back at uh, whether we can start bringing employees in in a way that's safe and legal starting this week or next week. You know, this essential business thing's kind of funny. Um, we, we don't want to take advantage of that. I see some stores staying open that really shouldn't be. And then you have people, okay, Walmart has essential products, but then that means that everyone can go to Walmart and buy unessential products. And it's a competitive disadvantage Absolutely. to small businesses. So I don't want to say the answer to that is that we should all be able to do what we want. I want to be safe and respect the public health needs. Um, 
but I do think targeted openings that are more intelligent and careful can allow businesses to get back to work in a safe way. When, whenever I think it's not safe here, I just go to like a grocery store and I'm like, oh my God, there's nothing in my store resembling the level of, you know, potential contamination that's going on here. So we're, we're going to try to do that. You know, consumer electronics and other things are actually essential. So we sell things like recording gear. We've got churches and broadcasters and musicians buying gear from us that they need to go online to continue their own businesses. And that actually does fall under an essential category. So again, I'm not going to try to take advantage and do something either dangerous or illegal, but we're going to try to see if we can utilize some of that to start bringing back, you know, employees in a safe way going forward soon. I'm, I'm just, people who know me know I have a huge capacity for work and I am done, man. I, I, I've been doing six weeks of shipping. Yeah. So, because it's, okay, my shipping is a full-time job, right? Not a big deal. But when you take a full-time job that requires you to be hands-on and do everything carefully all day, and then you add in the applying for PPP loans and EIDL loans and helping every employee with partial unemployment claims and, um, you know, dealing with, you know, all of the business dis disruptions, refinancing every loan, restructuring every agreement, uh, it, that'll, that's a full-time job. The shipping is a full-time job. I got three kids at home with no school. That's a full-time job. Um, the stress and exhaustion of the whole thing is, you know, that's a full-time job. So I'm, I'm cooked right now. I'm done. Yeah. Um, so, um, what, what do you, I mean, you got, I mean, really, I, I love the guitars. Look, look, guitars. Awesome. Oh, guitars, nice. Guitars. Look at guitars. How many I got so many guitars. Um, <laughs> and I love guitars. And, I, and I, your shop is one of my faves. What do, you, what do you attribute that success to? Well, um, you know, there's a few things. One, one is, as I said, responsiveness to the community. Sure. You know, sure. we don't we call what we do here a reality-based model of business. We try to respond to the real needs of the people around us. We didn't come up with a business idea and then just say, hey, let's throw that on people. Sure. We built those business in other settings and over time, over many years. And um, so I think the, the, the customer first approach is a really big deal. I think the fact that we are recycling and reusing products is a big deal. You know, right now, uh, not everybody wants to buy new stuff. Sure. Around here, especially, people want to support, you know, a, a, a more localized economy. So, so supporting the individual people in the community, um, supporting a localized economy and the recycling of products, um, the trust that we give to people. You know, we really, I always wanted to shop at a store like mine. I want nothing more than to go to a store and go, I, I know you guys, I can trust you. Here's what I want. Help me out. And when people let us do that, it's freaking magic. You know, when people, people are used to getting ripped off. So you get a lot of people come and they don't believe that. They really don't believe that you're going to do that for them. So, you know, um, a little bit of knowledge can be a dangerous thing, right? When you come in and you think you know what you're doing and the people there are just there to rip you off. Sometimes you are not helping yourself out, you know? Um, so the other thing is the people who work here. I, I always uh, really want to stress that when I come in an interview that, like, I know I'm good at my job, but everybody here is really awesome at their job, yeah. and they really care. From experience, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I got it. No. Your, your staff is awesome because yeah. not only do they know what they're doing really well, like you can ask them a question, they, they know it. They'll, yeah. they'll make sure they know what's going on with their guitar. It's very Guitar has a lot of moving parts. Yeah. Um, but they'll deliver it in a way that's nice and yeah. palatable and, and friendly and enjoyable. It's an enjoyable experience. Yeah, absolutely. And they're all they're all young musicians, they're all touring musicians. So they, you know, they're out there touring and playing and using all the gear and you know, so they can help people with all that. And they all care. You know, I actually you kinda have to be a ninja to work here. You know, we get people who come in and they're like, Oh, are you hiring? And I'm just like no, we don't hire. We, we yeah. evolve. You know, we, 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 if someone becomes a part of the crew because it 
sort of happens organically and they fit and they have the skills, but it's pretty rare that someone will walk in and they just get hired or whatever, because it's, we need to know people and we need to know a lot about people, know a lot about people before we would, you know, allow them on staff. So we're really careful about that, you know, and the other thing is um, we, I, I have really high expectations of myself and my employees. And so we just drive the train really hard here. And I really thank my employees for putting up with it, you know, yeah, but we, that. you know, it's, and we, but we do it because we're just motivated. We're just personally motivated. Yeah. I'm not doing this to make a million dollars. I mean, we've actually been financially successful here and that's nice, sure. but nobody is getting rich here. That's not what's happening, but we're extremely motivated just by, the fact of doing an excellent job. So everyone, that's another thing to say about the staff, myself and the staff, if you don't have a bent towards just doing everything you do, the best you can do it, then you can really fit it in in our staff. That's kind of how we do things. So, um, you know, that's another good reason for our success. And, um, you know, I, I could probably go on for a while, but uh, I think that covers really, really most of it. You know, we're, we're pretty, we're pretty thoughtful and careful about what we do here. Everything's pretty intentional and everything's pretty planned and everything's pretty responsive to, you know, what we see and what we learn every day. So. I love it. And, and you'll definitely see that if, if, if you visit Mill River Music when, when uh, we can all go outside again. Uh, yeah, so we really look forward to seeing you guys. We miss our customers. Totally. Likewise. Likewise. Yeah. And John, what, um, what, uh, what's your website? Uh, the website's millrivermusic.com. Okay. And best and, phone uh, what's, what's, the best that? Phone, what's the best phone number to reach? Oh, phone number 413-505-0129. It's 413-505-0129. Email is info at millrivermusic.com. Perfect. Info uh, at millrivermusic. And then the website's up there. Uh, most of our products are online. Not everything, you know, Feel free to call if you're looking for something. Perfect. And that'll all be in the show notes. Uh, John awesome. from Mill River Music. John Aaron C. John, it's been really awesome. Thanks so much for your time. Pleasure. Thank you, Tim. Really appreciate it. You well.